Welcome students. This is the first video in a three part series um, looking at quantitative chemistry in the higher tier chemistry paper one for AQA combined science. Um, this first video is looking at reacting masses from balanced equations. Now, please don't forget to um, subscribe, like the video and share amongst other fellow students so that I can continue to grow this channel. It is much appreciated. Now, the first um, thing I'm going to talk about is exam question approach. And this is really important. If you've been watching any of the videos in on this channel, you will know that I really strongly advise students to take their time when they're reading the exam questions. Um, and specifically, I've got a whole playlist related to exam technique approach. And um, I'm not going to go into detail about individual steps in this particular approach. I will just leave it on the screen. Um, for those of you who have not um, watched any previous videos, please just pause and have a look and make sure you understand the four steps to success in answering exam questions. OK, now that you're aware of some of the things that I advise you to do when answering exam questions, we're now going to focus on how to use balanced equations to work out reacting masses. And I'll repeat, this is specifically a higher tier um, skill. So I have a five step process. I'm all about flow charts and making sure you know what the key steps are so that you basically can't go wrong. And in this case, the key thing to remember is those steps. So if you remember the steps and you've done some practice questions, you should get these questions right every time. So step one, always write a balanced equation. If they give you the equation, or most of the times they will, check that it is balanced because that may be part one of the question. So always check that it's balanced. Step two, Annotate the masses that you have been given. So they will normally tell you in the question one of the reactants or products that they have the mass for and the one that they want you to find out. So in this particular example, they've given me the mass of the sodium hydroxide, which is 100 grams, and they want me to find out the mass of chlorine that will react with it. And then step three, calculate the relative formula mass or the relative atomic mass, depending on whether it's a molecule or a, an atom of the masses that you have been given or the mass that you need to find out. So the um, relative formula mass of sodium hydroxide, sodium hydroxide is 40, as you can see on the screen, and the relative um, formula mass of chlorine is 71. Then step four, calculate the moles of known quantities. So that is using the mole equation, N for moles equals M for mass in grams. Remember, this is the one um, equation where mass is not in kilograms, it's in grams, divided by the MR, the relative formula mass. So I only have the known mass that I can calculate the moles for, and I get the number of moles of sodium hydroxide as 2.5 moles. Now, step five, this is the bit where some students can go wrong because they're not so sure about ratios. Now, looking at the balanced equation, and this is why the balanced equation is so important, I can see that for every one molecule of chlorine, I need two molecules of sodium hydroxide. So it's a two to one ratio, sodium hydroxide to chlorine. So if I've got 2.5 moles of sodium hydroxide or um, reacting masses of sodium hydroxide, I must have half of that in terms of chlorine. So 2.5 divided by two gives me 1.25, and that is the number of moles of chlorine gas. And now that I've got the number of moles for chlorine, I know the MR for chlorine, I can then work out the mass in grams just by rearranging the mole equation. So 1.25 moles multiplied by the relative formula mass of chlorine is 71, and that gives me a mass of 88.75 grams. Okay, now that's one example. If you didn't understand that, play it back again. You can rewind the video and have a look and see how I've done it. Um, key thing, I think, is step four and five. But once you've understood that, you can do the practice question. So I have a practice question for you to try. Um, press the pause button now and try the question and then we'll move on to the next step.
Now, hopefully you've used all the steps that I have advised and you should have been able to see what the correct answer is. Now, if you still don't understand this, um, please make sure that you um, leave a comment. It might be that um, there's something that you're missing or something else that needs to be explained, or maybe you want some more um, support in this type of question. Um, for this video, I will allow comments to be um, left to support you in answering these types of questions if you're doing the higher tier. Again, please don't um, forget to subscribe, like and share this um, video and share the channel so that it can continue to grow. And I wish you all the best and good luck for your future chemistry exams. Bye.